Yeah, terraforming Mars. And I'm Jim Brown. Um, the, the, of course, the goal is to uh, to to bring us from uh, from a very dry, uh, low pressure um, uh, <clears throat> carbon dioxide to a high pressure, very wet. Um, but they they need to be. St uh, the, the absolute goal is going to take longer. Um, we, can get a, we can have a lot of benefit by just uh, increasing the, the, um, the pressure to where uh, we can get by with just the, an oxygen mask and normal clothes. Um, <clears throat> The, the, what we m need mostly to do that would be uh, um, okay, uh, we need a, I, I'm suggesting that we mine the moons of Mars to collect uh, uh, the material to, to add heat because the, um, yeah, the, <coughs> Anyway, uh, I want to have an orbital uh, reflectors to warm up the poles. Uh, to do that, I want to process the the moon, the iron on the moons of Mars to to drive factories on Mars, to to power greenhouse gas factories on Mars. Uh, now, I looked at iron, aluminum, and silver. Aluminum looked looked at first like it would be the most practical, but it takes more than 20 times as much resources to do that. Um, uh, anyway, I'll talk more about that. Uh, uh, but it, it's also, we want, also want to give the homes and settlements on Mars uh, lots of power, and I can do that at the same time. There are other advantages. Anyway, terraforming means to make the conditions more Earth-like, uh, better for life, to survive. Not all locations were truly fit for humans to live in without lo lots of equipment uh, on Earth, or at least heat. Other ne others need water cooling and other things. Few places even produce enough for those living there year-round. The first, most critical and easiest major goal in terra terraforming ro Mars is to raise the temperature, and there the pressure so that little more than warm clothes and mask of oxygen is enough to keep a working productively outside. Do Dr. Zubrin has done much work in showing just raising the greenhouse effect with stronger ge greenhouse gases um, is enough to do this, but it takes quite a while for that to fully outgas uh, very much of the uh, carbon dioxide and water. Um, uh, and, and you will also have to mine, it takes lots of electricity, and you have to mine the, the, the resources to feed the factories that you first have to build, which take lots of power, too. Once they are, once, once uh, there are lots of greenhouse gases, then uh, we can warm up the deeper regolith, but first uh, we need to uh, first most productive would be to first warm up the poles. Uh, yeah, w Mars once had a very thick atmosphere of carbon dioxide and water, w w and water once flowed in large rivers. She had a vast northern ocean. Most of these are tied up in the permafrost bonded in the soil of Mars. More is tied up in the poles. The lighter can very quickly be released with heat, the, the, just that heat there. Just a little under the surface, Mars stays cold enough for carbon dioxide to stay, to be tied up, or died up, in a permafrost type bond with the soil. The carbon dioxide and water tied up will, will take longer um, to fully, uh, to fully, 
uh, come up. But the more warmer the surface is, the faster this can happen. The, the Mars, the atmosphere as Mars currently only has about 30 times as much carbon dioxide per surface square inch as on Earth. This is still a modest level. As the initial temperatures rise, carbon dioxide and more powerful water will be released. As this happens, the greenhouse effects increase and give Mars a serious greenhouse. Yeah, and she will need, she will need about, she needs at least five to 10 degrees to, to really a rise in temperature to, to start a run, run away greenhouse process. That takes, that can, um, anyway, uh, I did a paper describing how to mine the moons of Mars a few years ago, um, mostly mining iron to produce concentrated solar thermal, to produce concentrating solar thermal tuber generators or solar dynamic uh, factory and the factories to make them. It showed, I showed I can recover the energy in about four days, uh, primarily processing iron and some nickel. If it is a uh, if it is a captured asteroid, uh, there'll be iron and nickel there, uh, and it looks like it it probably does have it. Um, then I went on to show about every uh, that we every month and a half, two months, we can make one about twenty times as big, at least. Yeah, starting with uh, a ten-ton system generating one megawatt. Multiply by about 20, 20 by 20, um, seven times you were getting up into petawatts of power. So, so after about a little over a year, um, we're, we're, I'm talking about a, a modest number of, uh, or quite a few, but a modest uh, number of different parts to do this. Um, and most of that can be done very automated, um, and with with uh, almost no gravity, it's it's much easier to assemble it. Um, anyway, uh, I I can cast off some of the older versions as I as I go, getting up into the uh, high megawatts, terawatts of power. Um, for the for the settlements, um, this drawing, uh, the the top half of this drawing, got put into the uh, my paper that was published, but the dot bottom half is missing, which is more more critical. It's the, it's actually shows more how, but but I put together something that could process the regolith with little more than having to pour it in. It it uh, separates the uh, use magnetic, make sure it's not too big, then it separates the, uh, the, the very, the moderately magnetic to very slightly or not, and, and non-magnetic. The non-magnetic you can pr normally turn right into uh, clear glass, but the very magnetic is the iron that I'm mostly interested in. Um, iron, if it's uh, undifferentiated, then, then there'll be iron and nickel in it. Uh, nickel is a very good mechanism to harden the iron and it uh, can be processed very, very well. The most productive way to process iron on, uh, on an asteroid or somewhere like Phobos or even on the surface of Mars is the uh, uh, chemical uh, Chemical vapor uh, definition, definition deposition um, using and and you can use the ba same basic equi equipment to reduce the iron, pull off oxygen, and to deposit the pure iron or iron nickel um, where wherever you want. Wherever you it only takes uh, at a, at about. Uh, about 100 de degrees Fahrenheit, 110 degrees or so Fahrenheit, uh, it forms, uh, 
it forms the a a liquid uh, with about fi with five atoms of or yeah five molecules of carbon monoxide and one molecule of iron. You can vaporize this by lowering the pressure, uh, blow it onto a heated surface at about 110 degrees or 210 degrees or so Fahrenheit, and it will, that's okay, and it will uh, deposit the, um, the metal where you want. You can end up with a mirror finish, mirror-like finish. Uh, you process it this way and it, it's a very clear, almost a silver, almost a mirror-like finish. Um, it doesn't have the, the dark gray that we're used to seeing in iron when it's processed this way. It comes out very pure. Um, anyway, uh, the same factories can also produce a micro-thin solar cells. Um, part of the, the factory is producing, uh, concentrating uh, reflectors to concentrate the heat to drive the, uh, uh, I should have drawn that, uh, to drive the uh, turbo generator. Um, anyway, we can put, uh, uh, I'm talking, we can put um, enough with petawatts of power and the setup, I can put in a few, in a few uh, in just a couple of days, enough, or I, I can process enough iron so that in just a, uh, a few days, or an, I have enough power anyway, and I'm, I can process enough iron, but it'll take longer, it'll take a few we weeks or months to uh, put together enough solar sails uh, and fly them off to the L2 position so that we can double the n amount of heat uh, hitting the surface of Mars. Most of that would be f focused first at the poles of Mars to, to melt, quickly melt that uh, water and carbon dioxide and then uh, spread over the entire planet to, to go on. Um, you melt that much water and carbon dioxide, we'll, we'll have in, uh, now, I've heard some, some things that it may take, us, take me uh, five or ten times this long. So it takes ten, ten years uh, to collect, to do all of this. I, I still think it's a phenomenal um, project. Um, Anyway, there is uh, so much frozen carbon dioxide, even, even even snows at the poles. It's so cold there. Water vapor is the greatest greenhouse gas on Earth. There are two gases. These two gases alone will raise the temperature of Mars significantly. Most of the water and carbon dioxide on Mars is tied up in permafrost, sc scattered throughout all of Mars, even at the equator. A modest rise in greenhouse in, in temperature will release most of this, most of these greenhouse gases, warming, and 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 the longer the the heat is there, and the the warmer it is, the more gas will will be released. We uh, then we can go on produ to produce more. Uh, anyway, we can even produce uh, much more than that if we want. Uh, I c we could. Uh, yeah, now I, I push for iron instead of aluminum or silver. Iron is, is not a, quite as good of a reflector, but it produce, it, but if I produce it with the carbon monoxide, yeah. Even more important, and it takes more than 20 times as much power resources to produce the aluminum. Uh, the silver is so, so rare. Um, there are many other advantages to developing the moons, uh, especially Phobos. Mining the moons of Mars to produce iron also produces lots of oxygen, po 